When I think about the kingdom of God, <laughs> I think that New York City has great potential to resemble that. Um, and I say that because of its diversity. Uh, the sad reality is, although New York City is a very diverse place, uh, it can be a very segregated place. Uh, historically, this has been uh, a melting pot for a lot of Southern Blacks who moved to New York for a better way of life. Recently, however, the neighborhood has experienced a great change and transition. Uh, gentrification is happening, and so I think that's one of the uh, challenges that's happening currently in the neighborhood, but also one area of opportunity. And so my visioning is to create a church that uh, welcomes folks from different ethnic backgrounds and different cultures. And I'm really interested to see what that looks like. How can we experience God's presence and God's kingdom together, drawing on all of our experiences and all of our backgrounds that we have to bring to the table. For me, the Bible has always been a, a powerful, a liberating book. I have a connection to ancestors who use the Bible in their own struggle for freedom. And so I think that's always been my entry point into the biblical text. Um, how can we see God's freeing work uh, happening? I'm primarily interested in that narrative as it relates to black men and boys who don't have access to certain resources and certain ways of life that other folks have access to. I'm interested more specifically with working with those who are incarcerated and also those who are formerly incarcerated. We incarcerate the highest number of individuals uh, anywhere in the world. When you look at the history of incarceration in this country, it's directly tied to uh, the issue of race. A lot of the plantations that existed back then that housed the slaves, those very same plantations were turned into prisons where they uh, incarcerated a large number of black and brown folks uh, for crimes that our counterparts would not receive the same sentencing for. What is God's message to that demographic of folks? Uh, how is the Bible speaking a liberating message uh, to them? Perhaps one of the, the major pinpoints that I try to reference uh, are the, the Beatitudes that are found in the Bible. I like the way that they draw us to think of a countercultural narrative that we can live into. Blessed are the merciful, uh, for they shall obtain mercy. I think this whole context of working with incarcerated folks, um, the question of mercy comes up very often um, because I think that when folks uh, do a wrong, we typically think, what should their penalty be? What should their punishment be? And I think the sad reality is when that punishment or that penalty goes beyond someone's sentencing. Once they've paid their debts to society, why aren't we able to extend mercy to them? Why aren't we able to give them the second chance that's needed in order to build a better life for themselves? My father, he passed away when I was three years old. My mother was there, but she was a single parent, spent a lot of hours at work in order to provide for my brother and me. My family was one that relied heavily on an extended family concept in raising all of us as children. Like we all were able to take ownership of one another. What affected one affected us all in some way. And so we were all able to pitch in in order to support each other. And so what I'm really interested in is reclaiming uh, some of those village-like sensibilities. What does it mean to build that network amongst folks that aren't blood relatives, but that have the capacity to support one another, that have the capacity to look out for each other, that have the ability to resource share to make sure that no one is left without. I would love to see us on the forefront working for the change that we desire to see.